Okay, in this video, I want to talk about the global technology trends of 2020 and what you might expect. And I'm very pleased to say that I'm here with no other than Jean Foster from CTA. You organize the, the world's largest consumer electronics show in Las Vegas. Um, most people have heard of that. So you are in a great position to maybe talk about some of the technology trends and what you are seeing. So Jean, what, what would you say are some of the, the big tech trends? The big tech trends? Well, yeah, as you said, we, we, you know, we threw this little event in Las Vegas called CES, where we bring in you know, 170,000 uh, people from around the world uh, to, to come to the show and see what the, the tech trends are. Um, and if I look at what's happened over the last few years and what we're seeing this year, you know, some of the all pervasive trends that you're going to be seeing throughout technology in the show are the big trends like AI. Uh, which is, is in everything these days, Art artificial intelligence is in everything these days. Uh, 5G mm -hmm. is a key ingredient te te uh, technology because you're going to need 5G infrastructure mm -hmm. to enable a lot of what we're going to see that's going to impact our lives, be that from smart cities and the cities, you know, the, the cities and the environment Absolutely. that we interact with yeah. or self-driving cars mm -hmm. as they as they start to develop, you're going to need that AI infrastructure, you're going to need the 5G infrastructure, you're yeah. going to need what we call the Internet of Things or as, as my colleagues and research are now starting to, to coin the intelligence of things. Um, because it's how about all of these devices are going to work together. Yeah. Um, that combined with edge computing is really going to change the way that we live our lives. Um, and we have the benefit of having the front row seat to see that technology. That's uh, amazing. CES. So are they the key trends then? AI, 5G, 5G the internet or, or the intelligence of everything? Um, those are those are the key foundational technologies that we're starting to see across the entire show. Yeah. But then when we actually look at some of the individual um, like verticals in the industry that we're going to see, and yeah. um, what we are seeing both from an association as well as CES, are initiatives like digital health. So mm -hmm. you know the use of of these devices here mm -hmm. on how we actually manage our health, not just to track our steps but really to start to take information that our medical professionals can use. Yeah. So um, the, the, the move and the innovation in digital health is probably, I think, one of the most exciting aspects the area that, that I'm seeing. super excited yeah. about as well. I, 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 I love I, it. I, I can see huge transformation in this whole sector. Yeah. And it's quite scary when you then speak to some health professionals of how little they sometimes are aware of the how fast technology is moving. Yeah, so we actually address that in uh, specifically with medical professionals in the US. So uh, if you're a medical professional in the US to maintain your license, you have to have continuing medical education credits. So you have to go back to class yeah. every year or every couple of years. Um, what we actually launched last year at CES was a CME, um, continual med medical education program for professionals. They can actually come to the show, they can attend our conference programming and, and as part of that, they can actually get their CME credits. Mm -hmm. So they're actually, we're introducing uh, the technology that's going to be used in digital health and digital therapeutics that these medical professionals are going to need and interact mm -hmm. with. Um, so that's actually a very popular part of our, our show. And I think we're probably the first technology um, program that actually, that actually bridges those, um, you know, the technology and the medical professionals coming together. Very good. So when you look at CES 2020, have you got any good examples or things that you find really exciting in terms of AI, 5G, the intelligence of things? Um, any, anything that stands out for you that you are excited about? There's a lot. There's a lot. It's, it's hard to you know when people talk about what's coming up at, at CES, it's, it's, this, the, the show is, is so big. Uh, there's so much technology across so many in industry verticals yeah. that it, it's you know there's there's not one thing I could talk for I could talk for hours and I sometimes do <laughs> on this. Um, some of the areas I'm really excited for in the show is we've just announced a partnership with the World Bank to focus on technologies used to solve global problems. So we're uh, we're actually going to be uh, kicking off uh, a global challenge that we're going to be putting a global challenge out to the industry for uh, challenging the industry to come up with solutions to address initiatives like resilience, 
how can how can countries and cities and municipalities be more yeah. resilient and what are the technologies that will enable that yeah. we're looking at gender and gender bias and how do we go over gender discrimination so those are some of the programs that we're going to be focusing on so the whole aspect of you know tech tech for good um which is used a lot um but the whole aspect of how technology can be used to solve world's the world's problems mm -hmm. Is, is actually something that's really going to be of interest, you know, we're going to see more of at the And this, this at the is show. What, what I'm personally excited about. I, I think we've never had more powerful technologies. I believe AI is the most powerful technology we've ever developed as humans. So it's now our role and our, we need to make sure we use this for the right reasons yeah. and actually solve some of the biggest problems. So it's good to hear that you're so we're, we're on the front end at the CES side, we're looking at how do we, what are those problems and how do we solve them and, and inviting people to come and participate in this global competition. But you, you touched upon, you know, making sure that we've got the right uses. So um, everybody knows us for CES, but, but our first and foremost uh, purpose is uh, the Consumer Technology Association. We represent over 2,000 technology companies in North America, uh, everybody from traditional consumer technologies to companies like John Deere, mm -hmm. you know, the, the tractor company, who are now part of our members. And what we've been doing from an industry perspective is we've been working and convening our members to, to come to develop best practices in privacy mm -hmm. around AI so that we can actually set best practices and, and share them with the industry so that the industry can start to, to make sure that they're almost self-regulating. Um, so that's a key part of our, our role. So mm -hmm. we have the platform to showcase the latest technologies, but we're also looking, uh, we use our place in the industry to help the industry drive forward. That leads me to another question that I, I think lots of people are interested in. How do you feel businesses can actually prepare for this uh, this new intelligence revolution or the fourth industrial revolution that we are seeing? Um, what do you see as some of the biggest challenges for, for industry? So I think some of the traditional, I would say some of the traditional companies, um, they don't know where to start. They see that um, technology is is changing and disrupting their industries, and some of them don't know where to start. But then look at the models, like like I mentioned, John Deere. Mm. So who would have thought a tractor company would come to the consumer electronics show, an agricultural company? Um, last year, and when I say last year, just pa this past year, uh, CS twenty nineteen, John Deere came along to the show. They 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 repositioned themselves as an AI and data company. Mm. Um, and they come in and they showcase their technology by having three very, very large like industrial agricultural tractors or combine harvesters, if you will, that were, they, they talk about a story about how they can actually, using AI and data analytics, tell to like, you know, like, like centimeters, what's a weed, what's a crop, how to treat them correctly and really drive improved crop yields yeah. uh, and improve the performance of the of the farmers that is an example of a company that's prepared for disruption in their industry mm -hmm. a very traditional farming industry who repositioned themselves as an ai company so our platform gives other companies who are saying okay i'm technology is disrupting my my world they can, they'll come along to the show yeah. to understand what's happening and see what other companies are doing. And so to answer your question, I think the best way to prepare is come and see what, what else is happening and, you know, what, either in your industry or in other industries that could have an impact on your business. Yeah. John, John Deere is one of my favorite examples. I've been working with them for a number of years now. And um, it's for me one of the greatest examples of a very traditional incumbent type organization really transforming itself, embracing this new fourth industrial revolution, focusing on big data, on AI, on IoT. So yeah, great example. They're great and, and yeah. they're such a cool story and such yeah. a cool exhibit. And who would have thought that going back five, ten years to, to see as it was mobile phones and TVs, and who would have thought a combine harvester would be <laughs> one of the stars of the show? Yeah, but you're, you're seeing disruption in, in, in every industry. So we have Delta Airlines uh, are going to be coming to CES this year, and Ed Bastian, their CEO, is going to be provide a keynote speech at CES. 
Um, that's another industry that's looking at technology to improve their client engagement, the passenger service, you know, from the time that they check in all the way through to their, you know, their, their experience on a flight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so they're going to be coming, they're going to be launching, announcing some products. We don't know what they are yet because they haven't shared that with us, but I think there's going to be some, some interesting examples there. Um, so first time we've had, a, you know, an airline yeah. on our CES stage. But not the first time we've had a travel company. Uh, two years ago, we had the CEO of Carnival Cruise Lines who did a keynote speech and had a very big display at CES. And I thought, why are Carnival coming to, to CES? But they were launching their smart city at sea. Mm -hmm. They basically were taking their ships and they were retrofitting their ships to be to, to be very highly targeted to enable data and analytics mm. to to have you know your eye for a cruise passenger mm. have a much more targeted experience mm. be it hey you you like this glass of wine last night you might want to try this one to okay I know you want to go to this restaurant for dinner tonight but this show is now going to be you know letting out at the same time so here's a different way around the ship you know very highly customized so so we've had a play in the in the travel and tourism space for some time um and and we're going to see more of those companies coming into mm. the to the show um and that's what's exciting about cs is is you don't know what's going to be the breakout no. um it's not what we last year it was com uh, companies like impossible foods and the impossible burger was one of the yes. top hits of the shows you know a, a technology driven company that's looking at how to drive a more sustainable planet mm. with, with plant-based foods great as an individual i think lots of people are scared about the impact of all this technological change on their own world and their own jobs and other things um, any advice on how individuals can get ready for this this complete technological transformation be open to it yeah be smart yeah. um you know we're 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 using technologies ourselves now. Like this year, we're going to be trialing uh, facial res recognition for badge pickup on an opt-in basis. So we're not making people do it, uh, but we're saying, hey, you might be able to, you know, to get through the lines. So that's what Carnival is doing. Yeah. On their check-in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I arrived yesterday at Heathrow Airport, and um, they were using facial recognition. Unfortunately, I had changed my hair color, and uh, that didn't match what was on my passport, so it didn't work. Um, but it was a much way of getting through Heathrow yeah. Airport yeah. Uh, that's uh, now available for, you know, for like in my case, you know, US carrying a US passport, yeah. um, you know, so, so there's, I, I just encourage people to learn, to get smart, yeah. be educated, be open. Um, yeah, it's scary. And, and a, a, a big piece of the work that we do at CTA as an association is really help educate the industry on, and, and you know, consumers in general about, yeah. you know, many of the technologies and what it actually means. And as I said, also looking at how can we help the industry self-regulate, develop best practices so that when companies are developing solutions like AI, they're doing it using our best practices. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you so much. Okay. Um, fantastic interview, thank you. Um, if you want to learn more about some of the case studies that Jean mentioned, I actually on my channel, I talked about, I talked about John Deere uh, and also have a kind of a, cruise a case study on there that you can dive into so subscribe to the channel or check out the other videos speak to you soon bye